Long range shooting is the firearms industry equivalent to the fishing story. Every time you talk to somebody, the distances got farther and the shot got more difficult. I got a little taste of that myself last year on the mile shot episode. We're gonna revisit that topic out here at Gunsight with my good buddy, Walt Wilkinson. He's one of the Gunsight staff instructors, retired Sergeant Major from US Army Special Forces, 30 years in service, and he's a world champion 50 caliber shooter. We're gonna visit some of the excellent long range facilities that Gunsight has to offer. I'll be shooting a very special 338 Lapua, and Walt will be shooting his world champion 50 caliber BMG bolt gun. This is a real special episode, and if you're into long distance shooting, make sure you stay tuned because we're gonna debunk a lot of myths along the way. That did it. <laughs>Okay, the gun I'm using this year out here at Gunsight in the Season 2 Long Distance episode is an Accuracy International AX338 Lapua, provided to me by my good friend Randy Pennington at Mile High Shooting Accessories in Denver, Colorado. Randy reached out after he saw what we did last year on the show, offered up a gun for Season 2, and turns out he's a Vietnam vet with a service-related disability. Really good guy and what I consider the best one-stop shop for high-end sniper rifles and accessories in the country. This entire gun was decked out by Mile High Shooting Accessories. Let me take you through it. They're the exclusive distributor for suppressed armament systems, which was the suppressor that came with the gun. It has a 20-inch barreled AX. is the base rifle, the 338 Lapua. The Schmittenbender scope, which he supplies, I actually got this particular one in flat dark earth from Mark Cromwell at Schmittenbender USA. This is one of the exact scopes that they're sending to SOCOM for the PSR program. The 5 to 25 PM2 is the gold standard for long distance shooting now, and this is the scope that was actually chosen by the shooters in SOCOM before the rifle was chosen. That's how good of a piece of kit this is. The spur mount was supplied by Mile High. They're one of the spur distributors in the United States. Excellent mount, has leveling bubble on the bottom, clamps on very solidly, unlike the gun we had last year. Good. Whoa, we're f what? The mount's loose. Good. The scope is f***ing loose again. Best mount I'm aware of on the market today, bar none. Also, Atlas Bipod has a throw lever mount and last but not least, folding stock, and it has the Blue Force gear sling on. Now it's a tactical sling, as you know. You can run the adjustment in and out as you need be, or you can actually cuff up, pinch down on your arm, and then use this as a support like a standard service rifle sling. That's one of the many factors why that sling was adopted by the Marine Corps as the recommended sling for the M16 and M4 family. Okay, TAC TV fans, I'm out here at Long Range Ridge with my good buddy, Walt Wilkinson, Sergeant Major, retire. We've known each other for a long time. Walt's a staff instructor here at Gunsight and one of the most dialed in gun guys that I know and a world champion 50 caliber thousand yard shooter. He's obviously the guy that I wanted to tap into for long range shooting. Now, I brought out a 338 AI gun, and you've got your Steyr here, correct? Yes, I do, my HS-50. I guess we'll confirm zeros, and then we'll get out here and start shooting some targets at distance. Walt, I know you've told me this before, but remind me, when did you get into long-range shooting? Back in Ohio in high school, all right? You know the groundhog thing, all over the place. Uh, me and my friends got into long-range groundhog shooting right there. We progressed through the 25-06 thing up into our first precision guns once I got in the service and was able to make a little bit of money with a Remington 40XB in 7mm Remington Magnum. I remember, you're an Ohio boy just like me, you bought that advanced shooting supplies in Columbus, correct? That's correct. That's me and my buddy got consecutive serial number single shot 40XBs. Good deal. Now, we've talked about a variety of things off camera here. When it comes to long range shooting, everything kind of changes at a thousand, right? That is correct. Once you get to that range, the bullet is dropping like a rainbow. So small problems in your calculations equal a lot, right? So the environmental factors of temperature and barometric pressure really affect the bullet. And you've got to really either run the math or have your dope book set up 
so that you know what the bullet's gonna do at different temperatures. And then of course, the answer to the, the problem nowadays is the ballistic computer. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we know you're a world champion 50 cal. What else do you shoot with? I, I compete with the 308 because I think that's the best round really to train with. I'm not using one of the super calibers there. Um, the long range matches, uh, I use the 338 Lapua, all right, going out to 2250 there. And then, of course, I shoot the, the practical 600 yard matches and the 1000 yard match with my uh, Star HS50. And one of the refreshing things about some of the stuff we talked about is you don't buy into the perpetuated myth of the sub MOA accuracy in terms of ammo shooter gun combination. That's one of the hard things that uh, a lot of the students that come out here, you know, they want every single group to be, you know, a half inch or so. And, and that's not going to be the case, all right? Uh, some people will claim that, you know, when they shoot that one time quarter inch group, that now their rifle is a quarter MOA rifle from then on. No, the stars just aligned and you got the bullets to, to go into the same area in a, in a tight group. A one MOA gun, that's what you're looking for. And we always have to explain that to the students at whatever range you're at. You know, at 300, dude, this is a perfect group, all right? And at 400, this is a perfect group. You're doing fine, all right? Don't get all frustrated. In most cases with the environment, environmental changes, and the ammunition and the rifle put together, a one MOA group is really what, what you should expect. So if you're shooting 1500, it's a 15 inch group. 15 inch group is an excellent group at, at that range because the environment really starts to come into play there. Good deal. Well, I can tell you, last season we had a blast with our mile shot. By your standards, it was, you know, it was rather crude per se, but this season I want to tap into a real subject matter expert and look at some of the science and debunk some of the myths behind shooting at long range. You'll be firing up your 50, I'll fire up my 338. We'll have a great I think we will. Yep. We've, and we certainly have the facilities here to do that. You got that right. We're up here on Long Range Ridge at Gunsight. My buddy Walt Wilkinson is spotting for me and we're dialing in my AI AX 338 with the Schmidt Benner 5 to 25 on top of it. Walt helped me get zeroed in at 100. Then we confirmed it at 300 on the Woodfield range. And now we're stretching it out to eight, 900, 1,000 different steel targets. And he's calculating the come ups. So in theory, we can be on the first shot or the second shot at most. And by and large, it's been right on the money. Okay, I'm gonna give you your wind holes in mils. Okay. All right, so figure out what they are. It looks like increments of 10 and then five, but in the center crosshair, it's only out to 10 on each side, north, south, east, west. Okay, so. Yeah, I can swag five. Two, two five, eight. seven, that kind of thing. Yeah. When you're ready, let me know. It's the small square one, third one from the right. I'm ready. Okay, favor right. It looked like windage was good, just, just underneath. Yep. Okay, dial up 0.5. So now we've come up 0 0.5, 6, 0.2. That's what we should be up right now at 882. Let me know when you're ready, shooter. I'm ready. Favor right. Clang. Yep. Can't ask for more than that. No. I think it hit just off the cross, upper left-hand quadrant of it. Okay. All right, we're gonna move to the 1,082. Two targets left. The one with the crosshair on it? Correct. I am ready. Right edge. Off the edge. You hit below the center just a little bit, so it looks pretty good. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. Ready. Right edge. Clang. Trey says maybe just a little bit below center. Okay, moving. 13-13. That's in the, that open field? Yeah, to the left. The two that are together, tall and short. I'm ready. Right edge. Oh! He almost got him, him, dude. There's a jackrabbit behind the target I was trying yeah, to Yeah, high left. Come down, point four, we should at least get in there. All right. Tell me when you're ready. I am ready. 
right, 0.5. There we go. There we go. Okay, we know we can pound out to that. Now we're gonna stretch. All right. Right now, the 338 is doing great. I'm using Black Hills 250 grain, mile high shooting and accessories hooked me up with the gun. We're at 1300 now. We're trying to push farther, and by all counts, with a 20 inch barrel, we're gonna start running into challenges. So we'll see how it shakes. Let's see what that little 20 inch barrel is capable of. All right. It's lightening up pretty good for us. We shouldn't have a problem. Mirage is not an issue. I'm ready. Right. Point three. Yes. I love it when I could see the bullet. How'd that shake? It'd be a 15 inch group. Dial up point four for me. 19.8. 19.8. Okay, getting less wind up at altitude. Most of it's on the ground. So tell me when you're ready. I am ready. Right edge. just off the right edge. So we'll make the adjustment. We don't care what's going on. Tell me when you're ready. I am ready. Favor left, favor left. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Guess what? Yeah. We may have found that point in the world where that thing's gonna start dropping off. We just hit 1.2 low. And the last one we were hit dead on. Okay. Oh. Let's try it again. Yep. Top left hand corner of the target. Got it. Watch your reticle. Yeah. You're right. We have reached yep. that point. So at this point here, we've now gone down uh, below the, the speed of sound. All right, and crossing back through the sound barrier, the bullet ends up having issues and we'll start tumbling, spinning, and, and yawing, and everything else. So we have definitely reached that point. We didn't reach it out at 1313, but now at 1470, we're there. Well, my world-class spotter slash ballistician, Walt, has figured it out. This gun is basically good to go out to 1313 on steel, but now we just tried just shy of 1500, and it's a no-go. The group size down there is the size of probably a Volkswagen. It's getting big, yeah. Yeah, and so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna back it back down to the zone where we know we can get good hits. We're gonna put the suppressor on it that mile high shooting and accessory supplied with the gun. And we're gonna see what kind of hits we get with the same dope, same data we had unsuppressed. Sounds like a plan. Larry, you ready? I am ready. Wind has shifted. Yeah, it has, I can tell. Left edge. Clang. Wow. I'm going to say that it hit. In the upper left quadrant? Yep, right in there. That, that, was, that was impressive, you know, to go add that suppressor and then have no oh, yeah, real I'm impressed. point of impact shift at that at range. At 1300? Yeah. I'm very impressed. Yep. You're gonna try go back out to 147. Right. Okay. Here we go. Dial 19.8. All right. Larry, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Give me left edge. Wow. It hit center low. So with that in mind, Larry, yep. come up 0.3. Okay. And let's see what happens. 0.3 would give us 20.1, 20 correct? 20.1. 20.1. And that's the suppressed one. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. All right, focus on the reticle. I can't stress that enough. Left edge. I'm going to say that hit center low at laid waist. The suppressor's giving it more velocity, mm -hmm. and we're getting there. That's well, good. the guy I got, Randy Pennington, the guy that sent it to me from Mile High, said that most people, once they start shooting these suppressed, they shoot them suppressed all the time. I am genuinely impressed 
with that hit with the exact same dope at 1313 with the suppressor on. Basically, it hit a man at 1300 meters with exactly the same dope, suppressor on and suppressor off. That's very impressive. Okay, now we shot the gun 1470 with the suppressor and we got hits on a target that we previously did not get any hits on unsuppressed. Now we're gonna see where it falls off the edge of the cliff, so to speak, and push it another 100 yards or so to just shy of 1600 yards. Okay, 1583. All right, I want you to dial 21.7. 21.7. It works out to about a mil and a half for that next 100 yards. Got it. We're getting out there now. Focus on the reticle. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. Left, 0.3. Ooh. About where the crosshair was at. Just out there. Okay, tell me when you're ready. I am ready. Favor left. Uh, Unobserved. Yeah. Outer space. That's not really good because that was 0.7 lower. Yeah than where we hit before. Larry, give me another one. Okay. We'll make an adjustment off that. Tell me when you're ready. Ready. Let me have the upper left hand corner of the target. That's it. Not only is it hard to spot out at that range, but yeah, we just had a, a half mil shift between those two. So, yeah, so. We were able to hold it together at 14 something, but. So that is definitely, that is the threshold of everything. The suppressor gave us that extra 100. 100 yards. Yeah, and when we added 100, we, we lost Makes sense. Hey, thanks for watching the Vickers Tactical YouTube channel. To subscribe, click here. And to watch some of my favorite videos, click here. Have a good one. LAV out.